Previously, we looked at the notion of a limit point of a set and a closed set. So let's go ahead and recall what the definition of a closed set is. So a set A of real numbers is said to be closed if it contains all of its limit points. And I'll leave it to you to look back at the definition of a limit point. Now I wanted to find something known as the closure of a set. So let's suppose that A is a subset of real numbers and L is the set of all limit points of A. Then the closure of A is defined to be, we'll call it A bar, which is equal to A union L. So in other words, it's all the elements of A union all of the limit points of A. Now, some of the limit points might already be in A, so there might be some overlap between these two, but there also might not. Okay, so this video is gonna focus on the following theorem, which is pretty important. And that says that the closure of A is the smallest closed set containing A. So the first thing that we need to sh do is show that it's closed. And then second, we'll show that it is smallest in some ordering that we come up with. So we're gonna start this proof by proving that the set of all limit points itself is closed. So let's make that a little sub claim within this proof. So L is, closed. So let's see how that goes. So for L to be closed, we need L to contain all of its limit points. So we want to start with a limit point from L and show that it is indeed inside of L. But recall, being inside of L mean you, means you are a limit point of A. So let's go ahead and suppose that X is a limit point of L. Like I said, what we want to show is that X is a limit point of A, which is equivalent to being inside of L. Now, because the definition of a limit point requires a choice of an arbitrary epsilon, let's also say that we're given some epsilon bigger than zero. Now, since X is a limit point of L, that means we can find some Y, which is not equal to X, but is inside of the epsilon two over two neighborhood of X intersected with L. So I wanna point out that this is because X is a limit point of L. And notice from this, it follows that Y itself is in L. But being inside of L means that Y is a limit point of the set A. And now we can play this game again. So in other words, we're going to find a Z which is not equal to Y. And that Z is within the epsilon over two neighborhood of Y intersected with A. So in other words, that Z is within A. That's one thing to pay particular attention to. This Z is an element from A. Okay. So now we have this Z is within epsilon over two of Y, and this Y is within epsilon over two of X. So that means this Z is within epsilon of X. So let's go ahead and write that down via the triangle inequality. So maybe I'll just say here, notice that we have the absolute value of X minus Z. So that's gonna be equal to the absolute value of X minus Y plus Y minus Z. We just added zero there. But now that's going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus y plus the absolute value of y minus z. Now the absolute value of x minus y is less than epsilon over 2 because of this condition up here involving the epsilon over 2 neighborhood. And then similarly, the absolute value of y minus z will be less than epsilon over 2 because of this condition making this whole thing less than epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, which equals epsilon. Now the next thing that we want to notice is that this big inequality right here starting with x minus z and ending with less than epsilon tells us in fact that z is an element of the epsilon neighborhood of x. Great. But then we also know that z is an element from a. So we have that z is an element of this epsilon neighborhood of x intersected with a. And that's almost enough for X to be a limit point of A. In other words, X to be in L. The last thing that we need to show, so need to show, is that X is not equal to Z. 
which makes this intersection contain a point which is not equal to x. And in other words, that means x is a limit point of a, but that means that x is inside of L, and thus L contains all of its limit points, making L closed. But this is actually a little bit tricky to see. Maybe I'll leave you guys to think about it, but a hint goes like this. Notice that the absolute value of y minus z is going to be less than the minimum of epsilon over two and the absolute value of x minus y. Kind of by the construction that we um, have used in this problem. But this inequality will imply that it's impossible for x to be equal to z. Okay. And so that finishes this first claim. Maybe I'll put a check mark next to it, and then I'll clean this up and we'll get to the rest of the result. So we just finished showing that this set L, which is the set of all limit points of A, itself is a closed set. Now we wanna show that A bar is closed. In other words, the closure of A is closed. And if it's not closed, then we have a problem with our definitions because we shouldn't sh call something the closure of a set unless it itself is closed. But we do need to check that carefully. So in order for a set to be closed, let's just recall that that means it contains all of its limit points. So let's go ahead and suppose that we have a limit point of A bar and we want to show that that limit point is inside of A bar. So in other words, we wanna suppose X is a limit point of A closure. And like I just said, we want to show that X is in the closure of A. But now what this means is that for all epsilon bigger than zero, we can find some Y which is not equal to X inside of uh, the epsilon neighborhood centered at X intersected with A bar. But now let's use the fact that A bar is equal to A union L to show us that that means that Y is in the epsilon X intersected with A union L. But now we can use some rules involving the distribution of intersection over union to tell us that this means that Y is in the epsilon X intersect A union the epsilon X intersect L. Great. And still, through all of these, we have that this y is not equal to x, and that's important. Great. So this actually breaks down into two cases. And that first case is that y is an element of the epsilon x intersect A. So in other words, the epsilon x intersect A contains a point which is not equal to x. But that means that y is a limit point of a. But that means that y is in L. But L is one of the components of a bar, so we're good to go in that case. And then the second case, so case two, is that y is in this v epsilon x intersect L. But that tells us immediately that y is in L. So either way you have it, we have that if X is a limit point of A bar, then X is a limit point of A itself, which means it's inside of this set L, which means it's inside of A bar. So let's go ahead and write that down. Any way we get to it, we have X is inside of A bar. In other words, the closure of A contains all of its limit points, meaning that A closure is closed. Okay, so all that's left is to show that A closure is the smallest closed set containing A. Up to this point, we've proven two things, that L, the set of limit points of A, is a closed set, and that the closure of A is also a closed set, which is really good because otherwise we're overusing the word closed and closure. The closure should be a closed set. Now we wanna show that a closure is the smallest closed set containing A. And so smallest, well, you might think, well, what does that mean? We ha need to have some sort of ordering here, and our ordering will be set inclusion. So let's go ahead and suppose that we have another subset of real numbers, which I'll call B, that satisfies two things. First of all, B is closed. So in other words, it contains all of its limit points. 
And secondly, our original set A is contained inside of B. So now putting these two things together, what we want to end up with, so here I'll go ahead and write that over here. So want to show that A closure is contained in B. So in other words, if we have a closed set containing A, we can always fit the closure of A between those two. And that makes this closure of A smallest in this point of view. Okay, great. So what will it take for A closure to be inside of B? Well, L needs to be inside of B because A is already a subset of B and A closure is built by A and its limit points. So that means we need to show that all of the limit points of A are inside of B. Okay, so now let's get to showing this. So we're gonna start by supposing that X is in the closure of A. So what that tells us is that X is in A or X is in L. And that's just because of our definition of the closure as the union of these two things. Now, if X is in A, then immediately we know that X is in B, given the fact that A is a subset of B. So we don't really need to worry about this case. And so all we'll do is focus on this case right here. X is in L. So in other words, we look at the case when X is a limit point of A. That's what it means to be inside of L. We are a limit point of A. Now, we wanna show that that means that X is inside of B. So let's go ahead and do that. So the fact that X is a limit point of A, that means that given all epsilon bigger than zero, we can find some Y which is not equal to X, which is inside of the epsilon neighborhood of X intersected with A. That's what it means to be inside, that's what it means to be to be a limit point of A. But then, since A is a subset of B, we know that this is contained inside of V epsilon X intersect B. But what that tells us is that X is a limit point of B. That's exactly what this equation tells us. But the fact that X is in a, but then the fact that B is closed tells us that X itself is inside of B. So let's see what we've done here. We started with X is in the closure of A, then that split up into two cases, and both of those cases led to X being inside of B. But if X being in the closure of A implies X is in B, that tells us that the closure of A is a subset of B, which is exactly what we needed to show for this smallness condition. And that's a good place to stop.